From the Forest View Recreation Center in Arlington Heights, Illinois, Sports Channel presents the 1991 Illinois High School Association Boys Gymnastics Championships. Hello, everyone. I'm Gene Honda. We're about to crowd one state team champion and seven individual champions at this year's gymnastics event. We already have one champion, and to talk about him, let's bring in our analyst for this evening, a former state champion himself, Rob Brown. Rob? Larry O'Hannis is the all-around champion this weekend. He's from Bloodbrook South, and it's his first year in Illinois gymnastics. He's a senior. And as we can see from his scores, he was the most consistent all-rounder this weekend. And that's why he won the all-round title. As Rob said, he's only been in gymnastics for about one year. And according to his coach, Tom Neville, in that year, he brought a very infectious spirit to the entire team. Larry motivated the team towards qualifying for the state. Once Larry came out for our team, uh, we realized that we could make it downstate as a team, and his influence in the gym and his motivation and his worth e work ethics really uh, made the other kids work a lot harder and reach goals that they probably would not have otherwise reached. Now, for the individual competitors, they can make a difference towards the team. And the team standing as of right now show that Hinsdale Central is on top. Hinsdale Central is a hot team this week, and they've got almost a two-point lead going into finals tonight. You can see the standings for all of the eight teams competing this weekend. And you also see the defending state champion, Mundelein, isn't that far behind and could sneak into second place at the end of the night. That'll be determined by the individual competitors and the individual competition. And we'll begin with that in just a few moments as the IHSA Boys Gymnastic Championships return here on Sports Channel. Welcome back to Forest View Recreation Center in Ellington Heights for the IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships. I'm Gene Honda along with Rob Brown. And Rob, our first two events will be the pommel horse and the floor exercise. Yes, Gene, and uh, these two usually uh, are very exciting. Uh, the athletes have their adrenaline going, and it's going to be a first two good events. Is it difficult for a performer to be able to perform first with this type of exercise requirement? Yes, and each event has their own specific requirements. A C is the most difficult skill, a B is a medium level difficulty skill, and an A is the easiest part. Here are the floor exercise requirements. They have to do a tumbling pass of at least one C in difficulty, one strength move of at least B value, a hold part on one arm or one leg, and the routine's got to be harmonious and have some kind of rhythm. Now, the pommel horse event will be going out at the same time as the floor exercise, so we'll get to see two events at the same time. And here are the requirements on pommel horse. The athlete has to do double leg circles. He has to do two scissors in any connection. He also has to use all three parts of the horse and face both directions. And the double leg movements have to be performed on all three parts of the horse. So the athlete really has a lot that goes into these routines. The scores we have seen in both events have been pretty consistent, too. Not high, not low, but all nice and bunched up so that we have a very, very fair competition going on. And that always makes it really fun, Gene. So we begin with a floor exercise. We'll start off with a junior from Homewood Flossmoor. This is Brian Yancey. And as we said, the scores are pretty consistent. He had a 9-1 in the preliminaries, and that was good for eighth place last night. And he opens with alternates, fall through the back, punch front, which has two C's in it. So he's, he's fulfilled that first requirement of having a tumbling C. And that was his press, his strength part also. And it was a little short, so I don't know if the judges will give him that strength part. But being a junior, and you look for consistency in performances like these, he had a 9-1 last night to qualify, plus a 9-1 for first place in the Hinsdale Central Regional. So, so that's pretty a, consistent. As a junior, that is very good. And right now, he, he really looks good. He's, he's performing well, except for that small bobble on his press handstand. And he dismounts with a double pull and sticks it. Again, that is another C skill. And he dismounts with the most difficult skill possible. The judges are going to uh, give him extra points for performing that. Now we move over to the pommel horse exercise, and we'll open up with a senior from Barrington. This is Ben Wu. And Ben comes in with a qualifying score of an 8.6, which had him tied for seventh. And Ben mounts with a jump to flares in the middle. 
travel down the ground, back to the middle. Now he'll perform his scissors. He didn't seem to waste much time in trying to begin his routine, and it looks like his impatience is coming through right about here. That's right. But he did hit the routine. That's the most important thing. And it sh should score pretty well. We'll keep you posted with the order of some of these people because it's not in a numeric order from their last qualifying from last night. Back to the floor exercise, we go to Kevin Izumi. He is the lone freshman you're going to be seeing in this competition. He's from Elk Grove, and with a 9.05, he's tied for ninth place. And to make it to finals as a freshman, that's incredible in itself. Uh, I've seen him tumble. He, we should see a good routine here. And he mounts with a double fold, which is a C. Open pike, front. Good composure, and we were talking about consistency beforehand. He had a 9.05 as well to be able to qualify from the regionals. And I think he might add a little difficulty tonight, so we should see an improvement in a score. Nice press handstand to fulfill his B strength move. Have you seen very much of a scoring difference between the regionals and what we're getting here in the state competition? Uh, a little bit. Uh, I think they try to hold the scores down a little bit in regionals just to keep it more consistent. Um, by this time in finals, hopefully the judges will lighten up a little bit and we should see some good scores. Kevin Ferris for his last pass on step out. Full, and he sticks. And Gene, let me mention, sticking that last move is very important because that's the last thing the judges see. It leaves a good impression. We will see more of the freshmen, as you'll see throughout the course of the competition, though. This is a rather elderly group of juniors and seniors, for the most part, competing this year. Back to the pommel horse, and here's a senior, Henry Vega from Mundelein. With an 8.75, he was tied for fifth from last night. And Henry mounts on the end of the walk round. And he's going to look all the more. And he breaks into his scissors. Henry's just swinging pretty good. He's, he's a big guy, and he's, he's fairly extended. And he's down in the end with another walk around and a handstand. A little rough, but a very difficult skill at the end of the routine. That was a nice set. And has performed better from the regional to the state championship. He had 8.5 and qualifying for the state. He also got his hair cut to uh, match his coach more, something he did not do at the regional. The forced cut has become quite popular amongst all the gymnasts around. Back on the floor exercise, again, a senior, and that's mostly what we're going to see here, juniors and seniors. This one is Rob Giannata from Willowbrook. He has a 9.05. That's a tie for ninth place. And he mounts with a double back. Beautiful. Very high. He did go a little off to one side, and he stepped out of bounds. That is a one-tenth deduction. And even though he's a senior, maybe a little case of nerves set in because he had a 9.35 in the Willowbrook Regionals. That was a first place finish for him to get to this competition. Absolutely. Beautiful. A front one and three to a punch one in the quarter. That's an excellent pass. You don't see too much front pummeling with the athletes. And Rob did two front skills in that pass. And you're seeing how a senior's composure can help him on night two of the competition as well. Absolutely. Rob tried to dismount with another double back. Very gutsy, very difficult. As you saw, he came up a little short. But he's smiling. I think he knew it was a, he was going to try something different, and it just happened to come up a little short. His last competition for Willowbrook. And you put a little bit more into it, knowing that that's going to be your last chance to represent the school. That's Add right. yourself. Why not try to go for the win? Back on the pommel horse to Hersey's Jason Danoff, who was a junior. He had an 8.9 from last night, and that was good for second place. Jason's doing a little concentrating here. And Jason's in trouble. He was going to try a mega yard travel. You could see when he just when he left the floor, he never really exploded into that mount, and he got in trouble right away. His legs hit the pommels, slowed him down, and of course he's off. 
and he'll have 30 seconds now to regroup, get himself together, talk with the coach, basically saying, Coach, what do I have to do here to get as much as I can out of this routine? How much coaching can actually be done in 30 seconds like that? Though? Actually, quite a bit. The coach will say, hey, get yourself together. You can still score well. And he'll tell him where to start and what he needs to do. Is it possible that he would change the plan of the routine given how he started off? Absolutely, because he might not get, the judges might not give him the value of those skills that he tried. So he has to replace them. And he's doing pretty well up to this point. He just got to finish his scissors and he's going to get ready for his dismount. Travel down, two loops, and a loop off. Jason Dana for Hersey. He's performed better since he's come to the state championship as well. But again, only a junior. And there is some room to improve. Absolutely. Maybe not for our next competitor. Back on the floor exercise now. And we get our first look at the all-around champion for 1991, Larry Ohannis from Glenbrook South, the senior. And even though he had good scores in all of his competitions, he comes to this one tied for ninth. And we're going to see some beautiful tumbling and a lot of composure. His score was a 9.05, but as we said, all the scores have been very, very closely bunched up. And again, Larry does a very nice front tumbling pass. Just in the splits, and he's pressing up to the handstand. And again, that fulfills his B strength requirement. And here's his balance on one leg. That is called the side scale. And a fall with a little step. Uh, I think what we saw was a very conservative routine, but as an all-rounder, that's what might get you to the competition and let you win the all by being consistent on all sorts of events, which Larry was. We will see just how consistent he can be. We will also show you something that occurs during gymnastics meet. Because of the way the draw is set, you'll see some changes in the order. For example, you're seeing now Jason Kobeck from Mundelein, who was a senior, and because of the draw, Larry O'Hannis is very close to performing on the pommel horse next. And Jason's, oh, I almost spoke too early. He was looking great the first half of his routine. Right there, he had a stop. That'll be three tenths. And two back loops and a dismount. He had a beautiful routine going. He's got a very long body. He's extended. It looks great. Well, senior had an 8.6, which is about his average from the course of the season. And that was good enough to be tied for seven points. Back onto the floor exercise now. Jawan Shepard, who's from Rich East, has done very well in the regional, scoring a 905 at Naperville North. Good enough for second place. But he did a little bit better in the qualifying last night for a 9.3 for fourth place. And he mounts with a tuck double. And does he boom it? He was way up there. And I don't know if they could hear the crowd, but the crowd just oohed and on. And now he's preparing for his press handstand. And Gene, although these athletes make it look so easy, that press handstand can be the most difficult part. Uh, the nerves are there, and the slightest bobble will throw you out of that handstand. And it's where you're looking for the control that you'll see on a few other events, but not as much as they stand out on the floor exercise. And those nerves that we just mentioned, I think, caused that little bobble there where he, he had an extra bounce to touch his hands. Because that was a simple landing. Okay, getting ready to finish his routine. And there's a full, and again, works the landing, sticks it. Very important. Beautiful mounts. Unfortunately, he had that little bobble in the second pass. This has been a senior's evening so far. And now we'll see senior Rich Garcia from Hinsdale Central. His performance has really come through during the state championships, too, up to an 8.75. He's tied for fifth. And now he's got it going. He's a little slow in the beginning. Now he's swinging very well. Racing to the Thomas Flair. And there's his two scissors. Back into flares. Oop, trouble. 
He got leaning a little bit too far forward on that flare travel and hits a leg and it pulls him right off. Traditionally, the scores in the pommel horse have been lower uh, than the other events that you will see. It's also one of the most, more difficult of the events, too. And that's why the scores are lower. It's, uh, I think it's a credit to Rick because he's an all-arounder. He's got six events he has to work on. And here he is on the most difficult in finals. And he finishes with a walk around and loop off. And he finished very clean. He's still going to do pretty good. Now we'll go back to the full exercise. You're looking at Art Carlson, who is a senior. He's from Hinsdale Central. Now, he has shown a real improvement coming into the States because his qualifying meet, which was in his own school, was an 885 for third place. He's in third place right now, but with a 935. And that's why he mounts to the front step out through the double fall. So not only does he do the C-level skills, but he puts a front step out in front of it. He does a legs together press. Really showing it off. He left no doubt in the judges' minds that he held that. And there again, a front step out to a fall. And now we'll see his balance on one leg. Here he'll take a deep breath in preparation for his final pass. Another double fall. Excellent routine. There's a hungry look you have to have on your face for some of these events. As a senior, as a junior, he's got it. Absolutely. Oh, there's one thing you cannot do in finals, and that is be complacent. You've got to be as aggressive as ever. Back down to the pommel horse event from Mundelein, John Wasik. Now, John's one of the few sophomores performing this year, but he's one of the reasons why Coach Forge has a lot of smiles on his face seeing some of his young kids performing this year. Absolutely. And again, we mentioned how difficult Pommel Horace is, and here is a sophomore in finals. So this, this young man is going to improve quite a bit over the next two years. And right now he's swinging very well. He got through the first half of his routine very clean. Travel down, loop off. Way to go. He showed a two tenths point improvement going from the regional to the state. And that's quite an improvement, especially with all the pressure of being a state tournament like this. Absolutely. And as we've seen, there's been two or three misses on the horse thus, thus far. Just the fact that he stayed on and he got him through his routine will probably put him in the top five. We're very close to Hoffman Estates being at Arlington Heights, and that's where Conan is, and that's where Oscar Trujillo is from, and he is now on the floor exercise. And here's his mount on a foot flop. Double fall, beautiful, sticks it. And Oscar's Oscar, a junior. And he was in finals last year also, so mm -hmm. he's a veteran. And there's a beautiful middle splits. And his press hand, oop, kind of rushed it a little bit, and I don't know if he held it long enough. That's a judgment call for the judges. And spring granny, beautiful straddle half turn. Thrown. And Oscar brings a little style to the florist. Uh, you could basically call that kind of a dance move. And that's something a little different. Most athletes just try to get through their routine, and he's adding a little extra things. And he finishes with whip through to fall, and he sticks it. Great routine. That could be a better score than he received back at his own backyard regional Hoffman Estates where he got a 9-2. Absolutely. And I think he's, he's knocking his head there a little bit thinking, oh my gosh, did I hold my handstand long enough after that press? We'll see what the judges do with that. Now back to the pommel horses, Larry Ohanis. He has had maybe six to seven minutes rest between the four exercise and now he's on the horse. And he mounts with a back more. And right now he's swinging very nice. There's his flares back into circles. And a no pommel travel. And now he's into his scissor skills. Scissor half hop. And he's going to pick up here and, and get down, down to the end for his dismount. Which is a rushing more right to a loop off. Great routine. 
Gene, just the fact that he's in horse finals tells you why he won the all round. Okay, nice job, guys. He was in first place with a 9.0 coming into the competition and could even better that score based on that performance. The only break I saw was really a little split of his legs going into the dismount. Back on the floor exercise from Rich South, this is Mike Lander. Mike is in fifth place right now with a 9-2. And the senior tries to put on a Mike good performance for his last show. Mounts with a double back, and he basically overpowered it. Went right past the landing, and he kind of rolled out of it. Handspring pike front to a front flip flop. And I believe he's got his composure back. Again, there's the show of flexibility, and he presses to handstand. Beautiful. He's got a beautiful body line. And now he'll do his scale. And he takes his deep breath and gets ready for this last pass. And because of the composition of the floor, there is some movement there. So even if he's very still, you will still see some movement that makes it appear he's wavering. And he had a little trouble at, in the dismount. He did a fun step out that landed a little short. He had a work through that pull, and he was also a little crooked and went out of bounds. So the judges might be able to pick away at that routine and end. The cheer you hear is for our competitor on the pommel horse, Jeremiah Landry, who's from Rolling Meadows. The senior's in third place, but not that far behind, 8.85, behind the 9.0 leader that we've seen, Larry Johannes. And this is a beautiful horse routine. He's got the long body, he's extended, he swings fast. He mounted with a mega yard travel, which is very difficult. Good now height. he's breaking into his scissors. Beautiful reverse scissor. Oh, trouble. He was trying a back more down. Finishes with a loop off. He got into trouble going into the dismount. He was trying a back more down. He basically just lost his, his sense of balance. He wasn't over the pommel. It can happen that quickly. We move over to the floor exercise. Linsdale Central. This is Tony Zork, who was a junior. Now he's tied for six, but with a very, very good score. He's got a 9-1-5. Tony mounts with a double fall. for his press handstand. And if you notice, there was a slight flexion in his elbows. And with the new judging rules, the judges can actually take off with that slight flexion. And he comes back with a front front. Very nice, very high. And there's some pommel horse on floor. Those were double lift circles. And it was a tuck back, punch front. Nice routine. Took a small step on the dismount. One thing that he lacked was, I think, just the overall difficulty we saw in some of the other tumbles up to now. Back on the pommel horse from Conant. Noah Webster is a senior, and he has performed much, much better. His preliminaries last night were an 8-5 on the horse. And he's looking at a 9.1 coming off the Hoffman Estates Regional. He finished in first place when he was at the Hoffman Estates Regional. So Noah Webster looking to better an 8-5 and try to challenge Larry Ohanis, who right now by just unofficial scoring would be the leader in this event. And he jumps right into it here. He's in his flares. Breaks into his scissors. Nice back scissor. Picks up, travel down, loop around, handstand with a pirouette. So he adds a little pizzazz to this routine. And one thing I'd like to mention on that set, it seemed kind of short, but in fact, it was just doing smart gymnastics. He just got his requirements and got off. Clean, simple, get the requirements down, and keep going. Back on the floor exercise, this is Linnell Fleming from Rich East. Linnell had a 9-1-5. There was a very, very big log jam tied for sixth place. He was one of them. 
and the senior begins his routine. And this young man can tumble. A pike double, and he kicks out. Unbelievable. That was a beautiful mount. And his press handstand. Step out, pull, sticks it. Right now, Manal has just got to keep his composure, and get through this routine without any flaws. Up to now, I haven't seen anyone tumble as well as he has. There's a small bobble. Not the intensity, but the concentration. And there it is. On his face, may get him the state individual championship for his event of floor exercise. That's Lanell Fleming from Rich East. Back on the pommel horse now. Ken Gramalski from Hinsdale Central. The senior had an 8-5 tied for 10th place going into the finals this evening. At his regional, he was not one of the top five finishers, but finds himself competing for one of the top five spots in the state. He mounts in the middle of the horse with a moor. Travel down. Travels all the way across the horse. And he's getting through the skills, but he really doesn't have the extension and the form that you'll see in a lot of the sharp horse specialists that we'll see tonight. And he finishes the quarter walk on and off. Maybe not the kind of routine that can help Hinsdale Central in the team competition, but it's not going to hurt. Absolutely not. And again, the most important thing he did was hit his routine. And that's probably what got him to finals. Our final competitor on the floor exercise, this is Sean Grossmetter from Wing Tech, one of the rare Chicago public school performers we have seen here in the state gymnastics week. And he is second in the all-round this weekend and only a junior. He had a 9.4 to finish first up at the Rolling Meadows Regional. And he mounts with a double full in sticks. Whip, whip, cut back front. Beautiful second pass. And being quite a bit taller than most of the other competitors, even Linnell Fleming, is that an advantage or a disadvantage for him on this routine? Really, it doesn't matter. He also has a lot of muscles, which makes up for that height. So he can control his body fairly easily. And the handspring Rudy, very difficult skill. In college or internationally, that would be a D level skill, which is one level above a C. He's not C. rushing through his performance either. He's taking his time. And finishes with a double fall. Great routine. Sean Grossman from Lake Tech. We will see more of him throughout the course of the evening, too. And as Rob mentioned, uh, one of the finishers, or finalists, rather, for the all-around title. On the pommel horse, our final competitor is Jason Rustin from Willowbrook. Jason is a senior. And he had a few problems last night, which accounted for his ninth-place finish with an eight five. He has done much better. He finished first coming out of Willowbrook with an 8.9. But even if he were to match that average from the course of the season, I don't know if that can beat Larry. I don't know either. It's going to be tough. But anything can happen in finals. The judges were having a conference. That's what the delay was. And it looks like they're ready to go. Jason gets the green flag. And trouble right from the start. I think basically when he goes back to the truck tray here, his coach is going to say, hey, Jason, take a deep breath. Let's just start over. Go, Jack. When you were competing, was there more pressure on you as a senior or a junior? I think as a senior. Um, I had an opportunity to win the all-round all as a junior, and I didn't. So I felt, hey, this is my last chance as a senior. I've got to do it. And he's moving through the routine very nicely at this time. I know he'll give anything to uh, 
to start that routine over again. And troubles again. After he picked up out of his scissors, he never really seemed to get the momentum going. And he finishes with a loop off. Plus, it also has to hurt to be the final competitor in any event. Even though you may not want to be looking up at the scoreboard, you can't help but notice some scores. You can't help but see other routines. But it can also be an advantage in that by the time the judges get to you, they've already judged nine routines. They're warmed up, and the scores tend to go up a little bit as the night goes on. But you still have to be somewhat intimidated when you see Larry Johannes and some of these others uh, who have good all-around skills, who have done well in the all-around, and now uh, you're the last one finishing them off. Does that make does that make a difference at this point for these people in their in their competition? Um, I think so. I don't care how long you've been in the sport and how many times you've been through finals. Your mind is always playing games with you. And when you see the big guys go first and they're hitting their routines and they look confident, it tends to uh, work on your mind a little bit. Let's take a look at the unofficial scores. First for the floor exercise, and I think some of the things that uh, Rob was pointing out about form and style and a little bit tumbling skills will come to the surface because that tie that you see in first place were two of the more outstanding performers we've seen all weekend. Yes, and they had difficulty throughout their whole routine and were also very clean. That's why they won. As you can see, Art Carlson had a good routine, too. Oscar Trujillo, Lanell Fleming, and Sean Grossvenner from Lane Tech. Now, Sean is the junior. How much is this going to be able to help him throughout the rest of the night since he's got to be a little disappointed about finishing second in the all-around? I, as an all-rounder myself, the all-round was always the prize. You wanted to win that all-round. So at this point, I think he's just going to try to have some fun. I think it helps that... He's gone through one event. The juices are flowing now. And now he's just going to go out there and hit his routines. All right, Carlson, we noted from Hinsdale Center with a 9.2. We'll check to see how it occurs with his score to see if that helps the overall team stats. But first, we'll take another look at Linnell Fleming. And again, this is his mount, and this is what's did it for him. A pike double back, kicks out. He was just way up there. So not only is he getting bonus for virtuosity, but it's also original. No one else did a pike double back this evening. And as you mentioned, the height difference between Linnell and Sean didn't come into play. Identical scores. Absolutely. And I think it was almost to Linnell's advantage to be smaller because he tumbles so high. Looks even like he tumbles higher. Is that an illusion or is that an actual height advantage for him? Um, and I is that it, an illusion the judges will be able to score on? I think it is an illusion sometimes. And here he is doing a scale. Now, here was the only little bobble. He's standing, and he takes a step backwards. That's very unusual. And he dismounts with a full little hop. Again, it just explosive tumbling that, that gave him the championship. And I think it was at that point where the bobble occurred that we mentioned that we saw so much concentration on, on Linnell's face. And maybe that's a little over-concentration that resulted in that bobble. I think that was an adrenaline bobble. I mean, his body is just electrified. And really, sometimes you're, you just lose control. So the floor exercise awards will be coming a little bit later. As you saw, with the floor exercise, you saw some crossover with different events because of the all-around ability of some of our gymnasts. Let's see how, for example, Larry Ohanis, the all-around champion, did going into the pommel horse competition. I thought he was the strongest competitor. Let's see what the final standings show. And indeed, he beats his score from the preliminaries. He had a 9.0 and finishes with a 9-1 to be able to take the event. And it's unusual that an all-arounder wins the pommel horse. And it's all to Larry's advantage. That's why he won the all-around. Pommel horse is typically the worst event for the all-rounders, and here he is winning it. In previous years, the pommel horse winner has been nowhere near the all-around champion, but this is your all-around champion and pommel horse champion, Larry Ohanis. And again, he basically swings very clean, doesn't do tremendous amount of difficulty, but there's no deductions. 
He just did two mores, and he breaks into flares. Those are beautiful flares. Look at the extension. And a no pommel travel. There was a little bobble. But again, nothing really big that the judges could jump on. And here's his scissors. And now he'll pick up into circles again and, and finish his routine. Ironic that in the past, it has been the pommel horse that's really prevented a, quite a few all-around champions from taking six individual events. Absolutely. And again, it's all to Larry's advantage. Uh, his future career will only be better because of pommel horse. A 9-1-0 to finish off the pommel horse competition. We still have four events left. We'll have two more when we come back as the IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships continue on Sports Channel. Welcome back to Forestry Recreation Center in Arlington Heights for the IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships. I'm Gene Honda along with Rob Brown. And Rob, our next two events, vaulting. But first, a look at the still rings and the different things we'll be looking for in the scoring of our contestants. That's right. Let's see what the, what the athletes have to do on rings. They have to do a strength part commensurate with their difficulty. An additional strength part. One swing move to handstand, one strength move to handstand, and the swing must predominate. Also, one of the events we're going to take a look at is vaulting. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the state record is a 9.80 held by someone named Rob Brown. Jeez, I, I wonder what he could have done. Okay, what did you do? Well, I performed only one vault. <laughs> That's all you get is one chance. The vault begins with a run, but is not scored. And you have to show a momentary support of one or two hands on the vaulting horse. And by the run-up, if he feels that he is not getting enough drive going to the jump, he can peel off, he can stop, and it will not count against him in his competition. So we'll begin with the Still Rings competition. This is Mike Dinowitz from Fremd. And the junior has an 8.95, tied for sixth place. And that's above his average that he's been scoring so far. At the Fremd Regional, he was in fourth place with an 8.34. And he mounts with one of his required strength parts, a back up ice cross. And here is another strength move, an L cross. So he's fulfilled his two strength parts. Now he'll show us a strength to handstand. So he's moving right along here, fulfilling his requirements. There's his swing to handstand of front giant. And there's a back giant and a double flyer with a small step. Great start. It's very tough to go up first on an event. And he put together a very nice routine and got things wrong. Uh, and did it by doing a nice, simple, but clean routine. And I remember last year, doing a nice, clean, simple routine was difficult last year in finals. A lot of missed dismounts, a lot of missed routines. Our first competitor in the vaulting competition is Joan Shepard. Oh, excuse James me, Mike Lander. Mike Lander. He was a senior from Rich South. And Mike is waiting for the okay from the judges. Now the problem for Mike at this point becomes he's ready now. Unfortunately, the judges are the bosses. When they say go, it's time to go. You cannot make them wait. That's where they, it's not fair, but that's the way it goes. The preparations they're making are on the mat, on the takeoff pad, and of course, on the apparatus itself. We got an 8.8 .8 in the preliminaries. And Mike gets the green flag. And he's off. Nice contact on the board. He does a puck super. He had excellent dismount. Dismount. Distance. In previous years, we've seen vaulting competitions. It's been very hard for the contestants to be able to stick their landing off to a good start. Back on the rings, this is Tuan Yen from Naperville North High School. And the senior has a 9-1-5. He was in the finals last year and has showed good scores in the regionals. A 9 5 at Naperville North. And he also mounts with a strength move called a front lever. He waits for the right swing. Back up right handstand, fulfilling his swing to handstand. And there's a back giant to handstand. And here's the 
Here's an elk cross. Very beautiful. A little high, that'll be a small deduction. And now he'll do his strength to handstand. Straddle press. Bail. Open pipe, double back with a fairly large step, but difficult dismount. Instead of doing it in the tuck position, he did it in the open pipe position. But as a senior, he was able to put in a few more moves than he did last night to be able to do it where they counted. Absolutely. Back to the vaulting, and now we have Juwan Shepard from Rich East. Part of a three-way tie at 9.05. He's going to have to do a little bit better than that because he had a 9.0 at Naperville in the sectionals for second place. Beautiful. He does a Sukar in the pike position. Beautiful landing. Um, that should score a little higher than Mike Lander just because it was done in the more difficult pike position. And so far, compared to last year, we've got two excellent landings on the ball. There was probably more than we did have last year. And good landings on the rings as well. We're seeing some very good comp comp competitors right now. The first two, our third competitor on the rings is Tom Hummel from LaGrange, from Lyons Township. He's a senior, and this is the man in first place going into the finals. And this coach steals him. He does a kick to Al Cross. Back at the Naperville North Regionals, he was in third place. And this is not the kind of performance that I would expect from someone who scored an 8.80 at the Regionals. This is superb. And basically what he's done is all his strength moves. He's done two strength moves right in the beginning, and now he just did his strength handstand. There's a front giant for his swing handstand. Bail joint just came, tuck double, and a stuck landing. Way to go. That's going to make it very difficult for someone to catch him in that first place position. What it's going to take to beat Tom is a routine that is as clean, but has maybe some original skills or some very virtuous skills. So Tom is setting the pace on rings. He said, hey guys, I got the strength, I've got the swing, and I stuck my landing. It's going to be up to the rest of the competitors to beat him. One of the stronger competitors going back to the vault is Dave Messervy. He was good in the all-arounds and is important towards rolling medals. Final total. Excellent. Excellent. That was a tuck Kazumatsu. And what that is is a Sukaro with a full twist. Mike has just distanced himself from the other competitors. And he had an 8-9 last time. And I think he already beat that with this move. Okay, he's got a small leg bend on the horse. But again, nice landing, maybe a little low, but again, the difficulty of the ball distances him, distances him from the rest of the competitors. That's gonna score very well. Now yeah, we'll go back to the rings. This is Tony Zork. Now he's a junior from Hinsdale Central. His scores haven't been that strong, but again, he's only a junior. He had an 8.85 tie for, or good for ninth place last night. And again, look at the strength. He mounts with a back roll to outcross, regular cross. Does a hollow back press the handstand. And I'm sure he's approaching this event with a little disappointment and a little more determination because of it, because he had an 8-9-0 back at the regionals. And right now, he's swinging beautifully, and there's another stuck landing. And for him to score that well in the regional with all the other strong Hinsdale Central athletes, you knew he could do better than what he did last night. Absolutely. And Tony is one of three Hinsdale Central qualifiers on rings. And here's Tony's dismount, tuck double, and he just nails the landing. Way to go. Now on the volley move on to Brian Loeffler from Barrington. And he is tied for eighth with Dave Messervy. We saw what he just did. If Brian can do the same thing, we've got a race. Excellent. Also a very difficult vault. That was a quarter on, quarter off front. Very difficult but Lacking a half twist. He was a half twist short of what Mr. Meserby did. And it here... Looks, it looks like the scores will be better because of this. Absolutely. And the thing that's difficult about that, routine, that vault is he's landing facing forward, so... He's blind to where the floor is. He has to basically guess and 
fearful of the players. Now in the rings, you see getting ready to begin his routine, Sean Grossbender, one of the Lane Tech Indians. He's in second place with a 9.25. Beautiful. He did a lock arm shoot to handstand. And there's a front giant lock arm. Beautiful. And that's called a whip it to cross. And right now, Sean is swinging the best by far. That was a back lever. Beautiful. Straddle bounce move. Sean does a straddle press hand to fulfill his strength in the instant. And dismounts with a back bail, lay out front with a full twist. I think the thing that stands out with Sean's routine is the beautiful swing. Extended body, his arms were locked on every swing handstand. It's beautiful. There's a swing, and that got the crowd's attention. We'll see what the judges thought about that one. And you see Larry Ohanis coming down for his fault. Excellent. Larry does a handspring tuck front. Again, very difficult ball. Took a small step. But again, the thing, the reason that ball is so difficult is you're flipping forward. You really don't know where the floor is. You have to basically guess, feel it in the air. Where is the floor? Here it is. Boom. We're seeing competitors attempting more difficult routines than we have in previous years. Now we go back to the rings to look at Rob Janata. He's from Villa Park, goes to Willowbrook High School. He's a senior. He's in eighth place with an 8.9. But as we've seen the routine so far, that could change very quickly. And he does a kip to L cross, to a regular cross. Another kip to L. And again, Rob got rid of all his strength moves right away. Now he's going to do fulfill his the swinger requirements. There's a back jump to handstand. Bail, high dislocate, tuck double. And again, a very good landing. This is an excellent competition on vault and rings tonight. He may have lost some for not being able to maintain his, his strength at the top, but it was still an outstanding routine for him. Rob Janata. Now, we're looking at Oscar Trujillo, the junior from Conan. does a quarter, one and three quarter. And again, kind of a different vault from what we've been seeing. Most of the vaults tonight have been flipping vaults, either the suit car type or the handspring front type. And Oscar chose to do more of a twisting vault. Also. Going back to the rings. The Hinsdale Central. We're looking at junior CJ Cool, who had an 8.8 .8 coming into this competition consistent of what he was doing back in the regionals. And that consistency is just part of the equation that has put Hinsdale Central in first place in the team competition so far. And I believe this is the second Hinsdale Central person we've seen in the finals tonight. And he also does a kept to cross. And then an L cross. Back up rise to L. And the hollow back press. And you can see him hesitate there for a second. And that's what the judges are going to be able to deduct for. And he's struggling a little bit there with his giants. And a little low on his dismount takes a couple of steps. Now the difference there is, again, his swing. He had the strength in his butt. He bends his arms a little bit more than we saw with Sean on his swing move. And that's going to differentiate his routine from the others. This is Pat Burke going back to the vaulting ex exhibition. Junior from Barrington. He's in tied for third place with Larry Ohanis right now. And that's on the basis of a 9.1 from last night. All right, Pat does a Sukar in a layout position. Beautiful vault, a great distance. Maybe a little loose in the air. His legs were a little separated and maybe a little flexion in his knees. But st still an excellent vault. 
so far are two masked events going on. It has not been a young person's event. That trend's going to continue for a little while longer. We're seeing juniors, seniors, and this senior, Kyle Walker from Naperville North High School with an 8.95 in the prelims. He was tied for sixth. And he does a backward roll to cross. L cross. Kip to L. It looks like the trend on rings is to get those strength moves out of the way. Get the more difficult, strenuous tricks out of there, and then let's swing. And here's a front giant to handstand. Bail, high dislocate, tuck double, and another stuck dismount. These guys are really making it difficult on the judges tonight. The judges are going to have to figure out, hey, everyone's sticking their leanings. What's the difference Dismount here? has been the difference this year. Dismounts like this one. Beautiful. The point difference is going to be quite small this year once we get to find out who is actually going to be in first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. This now, though, is John Rodriguez, a junior from Elgin, from Larkin High School. And John also does the quarter on three-quarter boss. And had a very good landing. And again, it doesn't look as difficult as the Sukaras and the handspring fronts, but it is because you're twisting so much. But as a junior, he's improved going from the regionals to the finals and to being here tonight. Back on the race with Nick Malone, junior from Willowbrook. Nick, too, has shown some improvement coming, coming out of the regionals. He is in fourth place with a 9.1. But the scores we're seeing tonight, that 9.1 preliminary score, could be irrelevant to what the scores are going to be tonight. Absolutely. There really hasn't been a miss on rings. There's been some extra steps on the dismounts. And he does kip to L cross and pulls out of it. Very difficult. And there is a straddle plunge to a bail front uprights. Nick does a straddle press the handstand. There's a front giant handstand. And a pike yeah. double. I can't believe it, Gene. Another stuck landing. And Nick did that dismount in the pike position. That was a great performance. And it's the kind of performance that you wonder where the scores are going to bottom out at with these, there's, with these there's, performances. There's Nick's landing. And again, you saw him use his arm to, to regain his balance a little bit there. I think we're going to have some ties. One of the lone underclassmen, Kevin Izumi from Elk Grove, a freshman. Took an extra step, had an 8-8 going into the event, but he's a freshman again. He was a freshman. He did a handspring pull. Again, no flips, but a difficult skill because you're twisting so much. And he's got time. He's got time to be able to, to do some of these events. You know, I think tonight, on uh, Rings and Vault especially, it's going to be the finer things that are going to make the difference. How well are your arms locked out on Rings? How well do you show the handstand position? On Vault, do you stick? On the Rings now, Joe Giarratano from Hinsdale Central. One of the junior crew they have there that's, that's walking away with the team title. And he mounts with a kick, legs together plunge to a cross. And that legs together plunge is one of the differences we're looking for. The judges say, hey, that's a little different. He's going to get bonus for that. He had a 9.1, which was good enough for fifth place last night. Had a 9-2 in the Hinsdale Regional, so that was good for first place. And Bale, top double. And a little hop on the dismount, but still a good routine. That was, that was the most difficult landing we had seen before, or the best stumble, I should say. And it was still a great routine. The other underclassman in the vaulting event, a sophomore. This is Jason Loeffler now from Barrington. And he was tied with Kevin Izumi at 8.8. .8. I can't believe it. Another Kazumatsu. Again, that's a Sukara with a full twist. And he actually, from a, a side view here, I thought that was a little better than David Meserman. And that will break his tie at that 8.8 .8 mark with this performance. Clean off the horse. Nice landing and a small step. Great vaults. I can't believe it, Gene. I keep thinking, hey, that was a great routine. There's our champion. The next guy comes up and, and does next best thing. 
He's got every reason to smile. And this now is Jason Pearsall from Rolling Meadows, a senior with an 8-8 tied for 10th. And he does double dislocate, shoot hand, kind of overshoots a little bit and has to recover. He still really hasn't hit, hit a clean handstand. There's a back giant handstand. And again, a little bobble in that handstand position. Back up rice to straddle L. And there's his strength move across. And an L cross. I can't believe the strength that we've been seeing tonight. Now, he may not have a routine good enough to win the competition for himself, but he, if he betters that 8.8 .8 mark that he had last night, it will help Rolling Meadows. And he does bail double back. And that could do it. And a nice landing. And again, Junior actually right. We still, the team competition is not final. If the Rolling Meadows athletes and the Mugline athletes can keep improving their scores, they can close the gap on the team competition. This young man is competing as an individual from Lane Tech. This is the junior, Sean Grossbetter, with a 9.2 in the preliminaries. I can't believe it. Another Kazumatsu. Have they changed the mat since last year or something? I don't know if they've got more springs in the Vulcan board or what. And here's another look at Sean's vault. Great. And the one thing that stood out in that vault is the distance. He's almost gone the full length of the mat. Great ball for Sean. We'll get a chance to look at the scores now. Rings. Now, the state record was a 9.65. And it is possible that we could see a score that will beat it. So we'll keep that in mind. We've had one person drop out of the still race competition. That was Nick Malone. And it's a shame because Nick had a 9-1 in the qualifying rounds. So our final vaulter for the evening is Ronnell Fleming from Reggie's. He had a 9-3 in the preliminaries. And, and Sean took the lead with his vaults. The last vault we saw, he scored a 9-2-5, which puts him in first right now. If Linnell but, but can Gene, do the same type of score as last night, he will beat him, but it'll take that to win. Gene, I got a feeling he's, he's gonna do an excellent vault here. If he vaults anything like he tumbles, this should be spectacular. Well, could we see another tie between these two competitors? All right, he does a Sukara in the stretch position. No form deductions in the air, great landing. He just threw it in the judge's lap, saying, hey, there it is, try to find something wrong with it. All right, would you guesstimate now that that would at least tie him with Sean Grossbenner? And here's the vault again. There's the stretch body position. And a little hop on the dismount. That might be the difference, that, that hop. hop. But again, he had all day on that vault. He was so high, he just put his head back looking for the blue man. That two or three feet can be the difference. We'll take a look and see what happens later. First, to take, we'll take a look at the still ring results. And again, as we were saying, it's a 9.65 state record. And we are so close to it. And you saw this, the types of routines we had. And Sean Grossvener has taken his first state championship in the still rings which is in and of itself an accomplishment for a Chicago Public School student to be able to do that. Absolutely. And as you mentioned earlier, Gene, we haven't really seen too many gymnasts from the Chicago Public Schools. And here we have a champion as a junior. Tom Hummel from Lyons Township finishing second. Tony Zork from Hinsdale Central. And Tony Zork's score will check to see if that will help improve. And here's the uh, championship routine here on rings from Sean. And again, Gene, the, the difference here was the beautiful swing. He does a single dislocate, lock arm shoots. There's a front giant with locked arms. And again, I don't think we saw any other gymnast in the finals do a routine with locked arm swing skills. Sean might have been a little weaker in terms of strength, but again, Skills like this 
gave him originality, plus his virtuosity in his swing. And I think he had a small step on his dismount. We'll see here in a second. There's Bale, full with a layoff front with a full twist, and there's the small step that kept him from a state record. That close to a state record, being a junior and all, that's a tremendous performance. We'll look at the vault score, and we see that that final vault, Linnell Fleming, the senior, edges out Sean Grossbender by five hundredths of a point. I love it. And there's a tie for third with David Meservy and Jason Loeffler. And those, look how close the scores are, Gene. Those two appear to be trying to have their own private competition here tonight. <laughs> which is which is fine because the crowd's loving it. All right, let's take a look at the championship vault. So that stumble at the end that you're about to see didn't really cost him. I think the difference was how clean he was during the whole vault. Here's his half on, a slight separation of legs, and no form reductions in the air. It's a beautiful vault. There are no obvious deductions except for the hop. So we have now concluded four of our six competitions. We still have two more remaining, the parallel bars and the high bar competition to conclude this year's event when we return on Sports Channel. There you see some of the faces of the people who can now call themselves state champions of the IHSA Boys Gymnastic Championships going on here in Arlington Heights. Great champions, too, because some of these individuals have really made strong contributions to their overall team standings. The team standings after four events look like this, and the Red Devils are having a grand old time at this year's party. It was close, but it didn't get any closer. Hinsdale has added two tenths to their score, and Rolling Meadows has added one tenth. So. Basically, Hinsdale Central is not going to make it easy for anyone to catch up to him. You see some changes for some of the other contestants and other teams as well, too. You see Willowbrook doing very well with some of the performances that we have seen from them as well. We have two final individual events to look at before we can actually say that someone is the team champion. Those two events are the parallel bars and the high bar. And Rob, these events are rather difficult to be able to understand for some for the normal fan so let's go through what the parallel bar looks for well here are a couple things that you are going to have to be required to do on p bars you need a swing and flight type of routine it has to predominate one move of at least b value in which both hands release and regrasp the bar with one hand or both hands you need a c value swing part and you cannot stop or have hold parts more than three times. And since a lot of people are more used to seeing women's gymnastics than they are men's gymnastic events, uh, the horizontal or high bar uh, requires a little more explanation than just the parallel bars do. On high bar, you're required to do giants both forward and backward. You have to have variations in your routine where your body comes in close to the bar. You're going to have to have a change in direction on the bar, and you need a B skill performed into, through, or out of the L grip. And you need a B release move, which is basically where you will release the bar and then regrasp. We, since we've been seeing so many seniors and juniors performing during the course of the evening, and, and since so many colleges have had difficulty maintaining their gymnastics programs, the availability of scholarships for a, a high school gymnast is diminishing. A lot of the juniors here might be feeling some of that pressure. Absolutely, Gene. I'm glad you brought up that topic. It seems like the level here has improved dramatically. The numbers of good athletes from senior, junior, sophomore on down has improved greatly. And yet, the college programs are not there for these kids to go to. Now, how about some of the seniors that we're seeing here, like our all-around champion, for example? Uh, Larry being a senior, uh, if he is not committed to a college at this point, what are his chances this late in the semester of the season? Um, not, not good. Usually a team, a college team, will sign their athletes in March, April. Larry has decided to go to the University of Illinois where he's going to be a walk-on athlete. 
Um, again, though, typically a gymnast that wins a state high school competition would be on a full ride. And that just shows you how intense the competition is for those all around um, the scholarships at the universities. We'll have to see what happens as well with the Chicago Public School System and, and their sports program and their budget problems because here we have an outstanding athlete in Sean Grossbender. And we're not sure how much longer some of these programs will be able to continue. And Gina, it's very unfortunate because I think sports has been getting a bad rap. Um, my experience was outstanding. It helped me in school. It, it helped me in my academics. Um, I really don't understand the thinking of, hey, sports is taking away or costing too much. We begin the final two events for this year's Boys Gymnastics Championships. We'll start off on the parallel bars. And we'll go to Kyle Walker, who is a senior from Naperville North. He's tied for third place going into this final round of competition. He's tied with Phil Hauser at 9.0. And there's the green flag. We're ready to go. And let's see if the trend continues, Gene, where these gymnasts are just nailing these routines. And he mounts with a peach straddle cut to L. There is a hollow back press to handstand. A back toss to a back cut. Ooh, nice recovery. Did you see how his hand slipped off? He managed to get it back on and continue. Way to go, Kyle. But well, what kind of deduction will that result in? That is no deduction. If you can keep the routine flowing, it doesn't make any difference. Just because it appeared that he was in trouble, but he wasn't. You can't deduct for that. It's not the appearance they're gonna deduct it for. If you're in trouble or not, that's how it's scored. Absolutely. Our first competitor on the high bar, this is Steve Powell from Wheaton North. And Steve had a 9.05 going into the qualifying tonight. Steve Moss with the Genova top to a full pirouette. And now he's preparing for that L grip we talked about in the special requirements. There's a jam, and now his wrists are twisted. He goes over the top of the eagle. That fulfills that L requirement. He hops out. That fulfills his release move. And now he's going to wind up for his dismount. Tuck double. And a nice landing, a small step. Nice, clean routine. Kind of improvement you'd expect from a senior. He had an 8.35, 8.35 in the regionals for second place. And he comes up with a seven-tenth of a point improvement and then this performance in this landing. And we got a chance to look at his dismount again. A nice tuck double back. A little step. Nice, clean routine. Back onto the parallel bars, you're looking at Kevin Sauer, who was a junior from Glen Bard North, Carroll Stream. He had an 8.65. And he mounts with a glide back straddle cut, which fulfills a C requirement and the release move. And there's a stutz to layaway and a front toss to upper arm, back cut. And Kevin is doing some difficult skills, but they're not quite polished. He finishes with a, a layout flyaway, nice landing. But if you're his coach, you're looking for those little improvements as a junior. He's improved from the regionals. And you're looking for him getting the kind of experience that he can't get elsewhere. Absolutely. State championships. Kevin is only going to get better. Um, these difficult skills he did tonight are going to be more polished by next year, plus any additional skills that he have, uh, ha has attained. We go back to the high bar for Rob Janata, who is a senior from Willowbrook. He's tied for third place. His 9.35 in the preliminaries is not his best score. He had a 9.45 in the regionals at Willowbrook, and that was good for first place. And he also mounts with a full pirouette and follows it with another full pirouette. And now Rob's preparing for this, the L grip requirement. He has a jam through to Eagle Giants. There's his hop to fulfill his release, and he's winding up big time. Beautiful double layout, this mount. Will the stumble count against him? Absolutely. Had the small bottle. The thing that he could have done is opened up into that stretch position a little earlier. He had so much momentum going there that it just basically blew right by him on the landing, and he had to take that step backwards. 
he wound up for that just not like he was going to do four flips. Nice routine for the senior from Villa Park, Rob Janata. And here's the dismount again. Look at the speed on those giants. And if you notice, on the first flip, he was he was piked. He could have opened up earlier. And now back to parallel bars for Paul Hauser, the senior from Conan. And that was an interesting move. He does a cast port straddle cut and a side glide, which again is is very unusual. In a one bar straddle L. Back up right straddle cut. And a stretch back off to a nice landing. He was tied for third with a 9-0. He was tied with Kyle Walker. And he's been doing steadily better since the regionals, too. That's Paul Hauser, the senior from Conan. Again, Paul did some very difficult moves, but his legs grazed the bars, and he just didn't quite have it polished. The haircut, the color. It's got to be Mundelein. This is Jason Kobeck, the senior. He's tied for third with a 9.35. And that's almost a 5 tenths of a point improvement from his regional performance, too. And Jason Mouse with a backup prize pirouette. Awesome. A one arm giant. Oh! Jason did a full twisting one arm giant and tried to do another one right after it. And as you saw, he that's called a ripoff, a ping. There's several slang words for it. Um, Got to compliment his coach. Here's the ripoff and great catch by his coach, Doug Ferrick. Tremendous job by his coach. And again, as you could tell from where Doug was standing, safety is very important. The mats are put out there because they know, hey, he might rip off. And the coach is standing there and because And that's the they value that. of the spotter that's being that's that's there on the map. And actually, the spotter is required. And he is not performing his L grip. He did a, a blind change and rolled his hand. And now he's winding up for the dismount. A tuck double back follow, and he sticks it. A nice clean routine, especially impressive after what had what he's been through. I was just going to say, Gene, how about the composure? How many people could go through a an incident like that and just get up? Have you got 30 seconds? It doesn't make any difference how bad the fall is. You have 30 seconds to get back up, compose yourself, and finish the routine. Great job by Jason. He may and not be competing for the state championship this year. Had he held on to the bar on that second one on Giant, that would have been the routine to beat. But that kind of composure is what helped Mundelein win two straight state championships. This is now Rich Garcia, senior from Hinsdale Central. And he mounts with flared circles on the end. And again, we see a little pommel horse on the P-bars. And here's a giant swing to a front uprise. Oop, Stutz. Looked like he lost his grip there a little bit. Another stutz. That's how it's supposed to be done. Front up rice pirouette. And a back off with a half twist. Pretty good landing. Unfortunately, he had that one slip of the hand on that stutz, and it caused him to drop down to the shoulder stand position. He may not be able to do better than the 898 that he had coming into the competition. May not be able to help Hinsdale Central, but didn't do a bad performance for himself either. Back to the Farrah crew from Mundelein now. John Wasik. He's only a sophomore. And he mounts with a backup rice pirouette. And there's his coach getting ready for unbelievable. A one-armed ginger. Way to go. And another one-arm skill. Right to another one-arm. This routine is stacked. And a double layout. Way to go, John. The value of Jason Kobeck and the kind of composure the senior show it has to be of great value to this, this sophomore. Absolutely. All right, here's the one arm to a Ginger, which is a flyaway with a half turn. And as you saw, he regressed the bar. Incredible. The Ginger is hard enough coming out of two hands. And John did it out of a one arm giant. Excellent routine. I mean, that routine 
had the difficulty of three routines in it. We'll keep an eye on his score because if it helps Wonderline, it could close the gap between them and Rolling Meadows. Back on the parallel bars, this is Jason Reznar, junior from Hersey. And we're seeing some outstanding performances from juniors. Maybe not the flashy international type of routines, but the clean routines that get you championships. Absolutely. And I think we talked about this a little bit last year. A lot of these athletes are coming out of junior programs where they do compulsories. And in these compulsory routines, that's where you learn the basic swings. That's where you learn the basic skills. And it's showing up here on the more difficult skills, where they're not, the difficult skills don't look difficult anymore. Now gets his approval from the judges to be able to begin his routine. And it looks like we might have a little more pommel horse here at the at the end of the P bars. And sure enough, there are double H circles to a flare on the end. Beautiful mount. Cast to upper arm. Back up rise, back straddle cut. And there's a giant to another giant swing front uprise. Back up right straddle cut. Oh, little short on that handstand. And a back of the half and a big hop on the dismount. Up to the very end of his routine, it was looking very good. And again, he swung up the handstand and didn't quite get to the handstand position and hold it. The judges might consider that an extra swing and deduct for it. And then we have a good example of a, of a good clean routine, but with some floors that we haven't seen from some of the juniors. That's right. Um, and again, that routine was full of a lot of difficulty, not quite polished, but again, difficult skills. Mounting the high bar now is Sean Bolden, Jr., Glenn Bart, North, he lives from Carroll Stream. He's tied for eighth with a 9.1. Look at this. Unbelievable. He does a kip cast hop to the L grip. Ah, you know, that's, that's a very risky move. He hops out, pirouette. There's a blind change, actually a cross arm change, and a granny off, which is a fall and a half turn. That's not the kind of person and performance you'd expect from someone who had a 7-6 in the regionals. That's a whole, that's, that's gonna be someone different. Obviously, he had some mistakes at regionals. I think he gets a lot of mileage out of that mount, which again was that, that kip cast, and he rolls both hands. Kind of a crazy trick. And now on the parallel bars is Tuan Nguyen. And he does glide back straddle to press handstand. Back up right straddle cut, back stuts, back stuts. Nice combination. And Tuan looks very good up there. His toes are pointed, his body stretched. Nice routine. Front in a tuck position. Probably the cleanest routine we've seen thus far, and it should score very well. The senior from Naperville North had an 8-6 from qualifying. He'll do better than that with that routine. We'll, we'll see if it's good enough to be able to get him a state championship in his final year at school. And again, what he what he did there with that routine is he didn't give the judges any opportunity to the duck. His form was flawless. Besides the step on his dismount, the judges, if, if, if he's fulfilled his requirements, he's going to get a good score. And there you see preparing for the high bar Jason Pearsall from Rolling Meadows, he's a senior. He too is tied for eighth with a 9.1. And there's a straddle cut to fulfill his release move requirement. The pass pirouette. Cross arm giant. And there's a roll, one hand to the L grip. There's the other hand on the L grip to fulfill his L grip requirement. Does an eagle giant hop out. Full pirouette. Swinging very well up to this point. Again, here's the crucial part, the landing. Nice dismount. Took a hop and a small step, but overall, a very clean routine. He had about a six tenths of a point improvement from the regionals. And he may see even a bigger improvement once this meet's over. Absolutely. Jason did a very clean routine. Not quite as much difficulty as some of the routines we've seen tonight, but still a nice set. Back onto the parallel bars now. This is Mike Lander. Back up right straddle cut. Press the handstand. So he's taking care of his C move and his release. 
And there's a strength move called a straddle plunge. Great show of strength. Swing through it. Oh, little trouble. And he takes a couple extra swings there. That's going to be six tenths. Three tenths for each swing. And it looks like he's he's not regaining his composure here. He's taking several extra swings. That's a healing move to upper arm support. Back up right straddle cut. Press the handstand. And a fly right with a half turn. Unfortunately, I think that the mistake early in his routine totally threw him off. He wasn't able to figure out, hey, what do I got to do here to get going? And he took quite a few extra swings. And uh, unfortunately, those are easy deductions for the judges to, to pick up. And, and they're going to hit him probably very hard for it. The senior had a 9.1 coming into the finals. There's your all-around champion, Larry O'Haynes. Back up right, Stalter. And another Stalter. Beautiful skills. And there's a blind change to L grip. And he rolls his other hand. There's an eagle. And he hops out. So he's fulfilled his, his L grip and his release. These are stalkers out of front giants, which are called an endo. And now Larry prepares for his dismount. Tuck flyaway with a small step. Beautiful routine. Larry Ohanis was in first place. Going to the competition with a 9.45, he may still own first place after that routine. And again, the only flaw in that routine was the small step at the end of his at, at his dismount. Here's Larry again on his dismount. That double back is in the open tuck position because he didn't grab his knees. And there's the small step. Let's see how well Sean Grossvender can do on the parallel bars without the help of Linnell Fleming, who's not in this event. And Sean mounts with a peach straddle cut. And he had a little contact with the bars with his legs. There's a stutz, a front rise, hot pirouette. That is a very difficult skill. And another stutz. And a reverse pirouette and trouble. And Sean's off. And that'll be a 5 tenth deduction. And again, I think he just wasn't able to regroup after he got in trouble. He I, he panicked a little bit and, and, and he had to take a 5 tenth deduction. He had a 9.05, and between last night and tonight, you could see that he was concentrating a little bit more. He, being the first time at a state championship like this, he wanted to relax, but maybe he relaxed too much. Right. And he finishes with a back off in the stretch position. Again, unfortunately, he couldn't regroup after he lost control on that reverse pirouette and started walking. And again, the problem is you don't come to a state championship that often. You can get into trouble like this, and it's a matter of whether or not you can regroup. And again, let's see if we can uh, find, look at and see what happened here. Here's the reverse pirouette, and right here, he isn't quite in balance, and he has to take a few steps. And then he got in trouble. Here, look at the routine of Rick Garcia from Hinsdale. And a back up rise free hip. And let's see what he's got going here. Blind change. And a double roll to the eagle grip. Again, one of those riskier moves that will be rewarded. And he hop pirouettes out. And a gango. Again, that's a fly over the half turn. That is a big release move. And he does this hip pirouette. Little crooked, but it recovers. Now looks going to wind up with this mount. Great set. Double flower in the pipe position. And again, he let everything go on that routine. Put everything but the kitchen sink in. I'm not sure who was more relieved at the end of that routine, Rich or his coach. And it's fun to see those coaches get excited. And here's his ginger. He was a little close, and you could see the, the legs break a little bit. But again, an very difficult release move. He had a 9.2, which was good enough for a tie for fifth place going into this final round of competition. Again, he's one of those group from, from Hinsdale. And he's having a little bit of problem recovering right now. You know, I think what happened, Gene, I saw him limping yesterday in the preliminaries. And I, I'm not sure. He might have a bad ankle or a bruised heel. And I think just taking the, the consistent landings, yeah. you know, it adds up over the weekend. And, uh, and I think he's just a little relieved, too. It's an exhausting weekend. 
It may be a cushion floor, but they're coming down with such force. Well, some of these guys are dropping 10, 12 feet. And now you look at Tony Bay, the senior from Mundelein on the parallel bars. And he mounted with a front uprise back cut and did a stretch press to Hanson. Ooh! And he tried a giant front uprise and didn't quite have enough swing to get up. And of course, you saw the fall. It looks like he's okay. Gene, I think we're seeing the other side of these more difficult skills. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that uh, even though they're they're trying some of these skills for the points or for the championship, uh, that these things can happen. But we're seeing more people than not trying them. And it looks like Tony might have a cut. Yeah, he's got a cut on the top of his head. And I don't. All right, let's see what happens here with Tony's. Again, this is a he's going to bail from the handstand. And he's a little tight. He doesn't generate enough swing to get up to the type of the bars. And again, no grip. And I think he hit his head on the, the lower part of the P-bars there, the upright. Looked like the lower side of the upright on the far side of the arena. And again, I think he's OK. I'm sure he wants to get back up there. But they're saying, hey, Tony, you got a, a small cut on your head. Why don't we take it easy? And chances are here, he they're not going to let him get back up and finish. Once he exceeds the 30 seconds that he has to try and restart his routine, what happens next? Um, you're done. It's done what the judges have seen up to that point. So after that 30 seconds, your, your, your try is terminated. Now, we should point out that there were two long discussions with the judges. One on Sean Grossbender, who preceded Tony in the parallel bars. And also, one for Rick Garcia was our last competitor on the high bars. Now, how this is going to factor in the judging, we don't know at this point. But we'll take one more look at the routine by Tony Bade. Now, again. All right, here's Tony again. And right here, he's got to pump his legs a little bit harder to get himself up above the bars. And he made, a, I guess, a, a natural instinct attempt to save himself by trying to reach back and, and grab the bars. Unfortunately, his hand slipped off and he took the fall. The doctors were very quick in coming to his assistance. I don't know that he's gonna wanna come back in tonight's competition. <laughs> nice round of applause for Tony Bade from Mundelein as he's being helped off the floor area. And We're down to our final two contestants in each of the events. And the team standings heading into this last round of competition look like this once again. Hinsdale Central with a lead of a little over two points. Rolling Meadows in second. And Mundelein close, but probably not close enough to be able to get into second place right now. And again, both teams... Now we'll go back to competition on the high bar with Dave Messervy, the senior from Rolling Meadows, to see if he can retain that lead in second place over Mundelein. He'll have to do better than a 9.4, though, to do it. And he mounts with a backup rise, free hip. And there's another one arm giant. And a cross arm. And a double roll to the L grip. Again, very risky. There's an eagle giant in that L grip. Top pirouette. So he's got all his requirements up to this point. And a full twisting double flyway. Again, Dave's added the little extra that we haven't seen tonight. He does the double back with a full twist. Your opinion, is that better than a 9.4 from last night? Um, I have to think, say yes, because last night he didn't do the full twist and double flyway. Now we'll go back to the parallel bars to Rob Janata, the senior from Willowbrook. And there's a glide back straddle cut and a beautiful dish swing back straddle cut. Now, and, and what's his mindset after having seen what happened to Tony Bate? You know, really, that's he's got to just shrug it off and say, hey, I know what i got to do. I've done this routine a thousand times. Just go up there and do it. And right now, he's looking very good. And uh, layout flyaway dismount, sticks it. Nice routine. That didn't look like a routine that had any doubt in it at all. Absolutely not. And now we'll conclude this year's competition on the high bar with Mike Lander, the senior from Richton Park. Mike had a 9.2 tied for fifth place in the preliminaries. And Mike, if you recall, had a little trouble on P-bars. 
Let's see if he can put that behind him and regroup for his hybrid routine. He's had some time, not a lot of time. Maybe we'll guess right here about eight, eight minutes, maybe a bit longer, though, because of the delay with the injury to Tony Bade. And believe it or not, Gene, it does take practice in, in coming back off mistakes. It takes practice to say, hey, it's behind me, let's move on. And he mounts with a front giant in the wrong grip. Very original. A free hip. And a cross arm pirouette. Rolls his hand to the L grip and an evil giant. And now he'll hop out. There's his release move. Pirouette. And he's getting ready for his dismount. Beautiful. Double back with a small step. Nice routine. Again, I don't know if it had enough of those difficult skills to put him up there in the 9, 4, 9, 5, 9, 6 range that we've been seeing tonight. But again, very nice routine. Take a look at Mike Lander again, the senior from Richton Park, with his routine for the high bar. And again, here's his disc mounts. Double tuck flyaway. Nice landing. And again, beautiful in that he was way up above the bar. Kicked out. Beautiful way to finish the competition. The score is going to be very close throughout all the events. We'll see how these two final events score out when we come back. The IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships here on Sports Channel. Welcome back to Arlington Heights for the IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships. We have now concluded all of the individual events. And now we also know who the final two individual champions are. First, we'll take a look at the results from the high bar. And we see that Rob Janata from Willowbrook bested his preliminary qualifying score of 935 by one whole tenth of a point. That's quite an improvement, Rob Brown. And again, look at the scores. Look how tight the routines were here. There's only, what, two tenths separating fourth and first place. Excellent competition tonight. All the routines were packed with difficulty. All the landings were done with very small steps, if any. Great when we came into the night's competition, I was curious as to whether or not they had changed the judging criteria or not, because all the scores seem so close together. You disagreed with that. No, the judging, all the requirements, all the, the judging skills are the same as they were last, at last year. Now we look at the parallel bar scores, and we see the same name at the top of the list. Rob Giannata with a 9.00. And again, the score is a little lower here on P-bars. Um, I guess this is one event that all the athletes could improve in, and maybe this will tell the story next year, which team can improve the most on P-bars. They were all very good competitors, but a look at Rob Giannata's routine once again on the parallel bars shows you that what he was able to do as the last competitor was more than just do the routine. Keep in mind, he is coming off of seeing Tony Bade have an injury. That's right. And Rob kept his composure. He knew what he had to do, and he put together a beautiful routine. He's got a variety of different skills. He swings beautiful and nice dismount. And again, we've seen quite a few misses up to that point. So I think Rob said to himself, hey, I just got to get through this routine and I can pull off a win. So now we know who the individual winners are. Who is the team winner? The answer to that when we conclude things here on Sports Channel for the IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships. Welcome back to Arlington Heights for the IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships. And now we know who our team winners are for the year of 1991. A look at the final standings, and there really wasn't too much of a surprise, or was there, Rob Brown? If we look at the standings, we'll see that Hinsdale Central, the Red Devils, are the 1991 team champions, and it's a lead that they had throughout most of this competition tonight. Or did they really bring it in from last night? I think the Red Devils did their work last night. They qualified nine men for today's finals, and they improved their score. But really, they were so consistent last night, it was incredible. They started on the pommel horse, which of course is the most difficult event, and they hit four out of five routines. That set the pace. They just cruised through prelims last night and, and really just out depth and out had routines that were more difficult than the other competitors. And again, the scores you're seeing are really very close and extremely consistent for this year's competition. 
Absolutely. Uh, again, though, the, the difference for Hinsdale was the depth. Not only did they have two top all-rounders, but they had men in the third, fourth, fifth slots that came in and really pulled the team together. If someone missed, there was another score there to count. Now, if you're a Rolling Meadows or Mundelein, you still don't have that much to worry about because we saw so many juniors and underclassmen performing tonight that coming back next year, you could very easily have a three-way race between Hinsdale Central, Rolling Meadows, and let's not forget Mundelein. That's right, Gene. And uh, that's the nature of the sport. Um, it takes years to develop athletes. If you can keep those freshmen and those sophomores developing every year, you've got a chance to have build a trend like Mundelein has done the, the previous two years. And again, Mundelein did not do too bad this weekend, finishing third. Let's reward those people who have performed so well this year now as we go to the awards ceremony for the 1991 Team Gymnastics Trophies. 150.40. Conan High School is in fourth place at 151.5. But we then have fit. Doug Ferrick bring his Mundelein Muscadangs up here to the front, please. Presenting a principal's medallion to Mr. John Davis, principal of Mundelein High School, is Mr. Mitz. Taking the medallion for Mr. Davis is Linda Hansen, the superintendent at Mundelein High School, and standing with them, the athletic director, John Graham. Coach Doug Ferrick, uh, congratulations to you and your squad for an outstanding performance again this year, taking third place with a score of 155.8. Now, Doug, uh, you introduce your team members to us, and Mr. Mitz will present their medallions to them. First, we have sophomore all-around Andy Bade. Next, sophomore all-around Ray Gerdecki. Senior horse specialist Henry Vega. Senior all-around Jason Kobeck. Senior toothache all around Tony Bate. <laughs> sophomore all around John Wasik. And sophomore all around Jamie Luazo. <laughs> Assistant coach, Coach Mayer. <laughs> and AD, John Graham. And Principal John Davis. So, Coach Farrick, used to being up at the podium for the award ceremony, usually in first place, goes for third place for this year. And we saw some of their competitors this year. But if you look on the left side of your screen and the right side of the screen, you see a couple sophomores mixed in there that we didn't get to see perform tonight. But, but you get the impression that with a third place finish this year, which is surprising for Mundelein. And Gene, I guarantee you will see a lot of those sophomores next year. Yeah, this looks more like the beginning than the end. That's right. Rather than being the award ceremony for this year, it's high. This is who you have to worry about next year. And again, Mundelein won last year, and they had three seniors that they lost last year. And to come back off of losing that many guys to finish third, it's incredible. And one of those seniors that they lost was last year's all-around champion, too, T.J. Dort. And unfortunately, a small piece of trivia, T.J. is a freshman at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And they have dropped their gymnastics program. We talked about uh, not, not enough universities to, to take all these athletes. And unfortunately, we've lost another one. I don't know what TJ is going to do, if he's going to transfer to another school or 
or just hang up his grips. And now you see walking up to the award stand, the Mustangs from Rolling Meadows, as they come to accept their second place awards. Their coach in his 20th year, 275 meet wins against 27 losses. And you can't ask for a better record than that. Meadows High Let's School go introduce Vic and his staff. Let's Sandlin. go to the PA announcer for the award Sandlin ceremony. Sandlin serves also as a member of our Boys Gymnastics Advisory Committee. <laughs> Team score for Rolling Meadows High School was 156.5. Head coach Vic Gaviano, take your medallion and then introduce your team members to us. My assistant coach, Al Kaladi. Adam Gorgiolo. Mike Kirchwam. Rick Lorzak. Tim Rotek. Dino Kiotis. Eric Tarasevich. Captain Jason Pearsall. Captain Dave Maservi. Jeremiah Landry. Dennis Mark. Rasheen Jackson. <laughs> and assistant coach, Jeff Robertson. Oh, and, and Brad Zilch. Thank you very much. And there's a second place trophy going to the Mustangs of Rolling Meadows and coach Vic Aviano. 20 years he's been there with the Mustangs. Finishes up in second place for this season. And Rob Brown, you'll notice that the one thing he didn't do when he introduced all of his athletes is tell us what year they were in. That's right, and again, a lot of sophomores, yes. a lot of juniors. Let's look for rolling medals again next year. And uh, I guess maybe a sad note is Vic has not won a team state championship yet. I know he's got to be hungry for it. I hope to see these guys back here next year. He almost seemed like he's uh, keeping one ace very close, but okay, this guy's coming back, this guy's not coming back. He's not going to tell you that. That's right. He'll let you find out next year when you come back to Arlington Heights. There's nothing like a surprise. No, nah, it's much more fun that way anyway. And now, they'll bring down the Red Devils from Hinsdale Central. As they have won this year's IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships. so many state titles in all combined sports. This is the seventh state team title for gymnastics. And although that's not a record, that does Taiwan. That does Taiwan. 
My alma mater, Addison Trail, also has seven state team titles. So it's going to be a possible race here in the future to see who can take the lead again in the team, the team total. And if you were, you were amazed by the one loss record of Vic Aviano, the coach at Hinsdale Central has a record over 17 years of 132 wins and meets against seven losses. That man there, and let's go back to the award ceremony. Right here, Pete Dwyer. Paul Predovic. C.J. Kuehl. Joe Giortano. Art Carlson. Tony Zork. Rick Garcia. Ken Grismalski. Brad Materic. Jamie Griffin. Cameron Kahn. John Zick. Nick Gula. Mark Carlson. Lewis Bokley. Coaches Mark Warner. And Miles Laffey. Devils of Hinsdale Central and their coach Neil Krupika in his 17th year with the school closes out a phenomenal year for this team. They had six dual meets that they performed in this year. They won all six of those meets, culminating in that trophy for first place, the IHSA Boys Gymnastics Team Champions from Hinsdale Central. Brown, the colors may have changed a little bit. Red and white last year, red and white this year. The team name changed. We've gone from Wonderline now to Hinsdale Central. Is this the start of a dynasty for them? It has been the trend over the last 10 years. Possibly. Um, again, even though Neil did mention it, there's a lot of sophomores and juniors on this team. This could be a trend. And again, I think it's good for the sport. All the teams have a lot of younger athletes coming up. Hey, let's make this more competitive. And the dominance of this team with the juniors has to make them quite formidable for next year. Oh, absolutely. In fact, they've got one of the top all-rounders, Tony Zork, who is a junior. He was in a couple events in finals tonight. So not only do they have good athletes coming back, but they've got athletes with great experience. So now we crown the team champion for this year. We'll come back with some final thoughts on the IHSA Boys Gymnastics Championships in just a moment. Welcome back to Arlington Heights. As we take a look at the final standings ourselves, you notice that there was a dominating winner tonight, Rob, but there wasn't really a dominating team, one that you think will come back next year. That's right. I, I guess you can call it a, a youth movement. All the teams here had a lot of sophomores, juniors, that are going to be back, and their teams are probably going to be even better. Three years ago when we saw Mundelein take their first of two state championships, we saw a team that we knew was going to come back and come back with a vengeance. This year, I think what we're seeing is three, maybe even four teams that'll come back next year and make it a four-horse race. Yes, and uh, again, it's that's all the better for the sport. The more competition, the better. And also, the Chicago Public Leagues are going to be adding some teams next year. We're not saying we'll see them in the state championships. However, we may get a chance to see them in the next coming years in a state championship like this. Our next IHSC event on Sports Channel is coming up on Wednesday night at 6.30 when the state's top girls compete in the track and field championships. This game has been produced and directed by Rick Godwin. The coordinating producer is Greg Bowman. 
Our executive producer is John Dewey. Remote facilities were provided by Trio Video. Once again, congratulations to all of our individual champions for this year's state championships, and also congratulations to the Hinsdale Central Red Devils, the 1991 Boys High School Gymnastics Champions. For Rob Brown, I'm Gene Honda. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of Sports Channel.